Well, as promised, I figured I would uh, finally upload the video that I said I would regarding my uh, home-built CNC router. Uh, just keep in mind that this was based loosely on a design that you'll find listed in the uh, description below. Anyway, going off of that and uh, making some modifications, I'll tell you what I did and why I did it and show you some of the components I used. Um, but yeah, this is Cincy, or CNC, if you want to spell it out. Kind of play on words, haha. -ha. Um, this CNC router, as I step back here, has a cutting area of approximately 3 feet by 3 feet by 4 feet. Or excuse me, 3 feet by 3 feet by 4 inches. Um, and it was based originally along the design, um, again, in the DIY or Instructable. Uh, for something that ended up being 22 inches by 18 inches by two and a half inches, so I have kind of um, kind of beefed it up a bit and gotten a lot bigger. Uh, I do. I also tell you in this um, what I think there are some flaws or some of the flaws that can be with this or can be with this design. Uh, so keep that in mind, and if you can come up with a better solution, um, cost effectively, do it on your own. Um, start off with, why not start with a bad, I think that aluminum rail uh, for as heavy as I've made my gantry is probably a bad idea. I can already start to feel kind of these corners wearing, now that some of that will be normal, um, but I probably should have gone with something like steel, perhaps brass or something like that, a little harder. Uh, certainly nothing harder than the steel that makes up these grooved bearings because if it did that, then the bearings would wear instead of the track, and those bearings are freaking expensive. Um, okay, starting out with, since I'm looking at it, uh, the router that I have here, you can kind of see it. It's an all aluminum body trimmer router. I've had this for I don't know how long, sitting in a box, so I used it. Um, there's others that have been made, for example. There's a Buffalo Tools one that will work as well. They're about the same size. This one's a little bit more powerful, but uh, do keep in mind you need to uh, count your amps and make sure you're not drawing too much power that will blow a breaker. So I'm going with this one. Uh, they're great because they have a quarter inch collet. Um, and uh, you can just mount up any regular um, quarter inch bit. Uh, also nice thing with the aluminum body, once I figure out how to get my uh, kind of auto Z leveling or Z calibrating in Mach 3, you can run current through the whole body so that when the bit touches that plate, it will complete a circuit, and that's why it knows that it's gotten its Z height correct. All right, that said, uh, the original design called for belts. It didn't specifically say what kind, but it did say belts, and then he used pulleys. Um, he said 30 tooth were a little too tall or too many. I ended up with 24 tooth pulleys because it's the only one I could find that would fit my NEMA, 7, or NEMA 34 motor. And then I had to get the belt that obviously fit the pulley. Um, I kind of lucked out in that uh, this is a 15 millimeter belt, 16 millimeter in depth um, or height rather pulley, so it's a good fit. And again, with all this extra weight, having the extra um, width of belt is good. Um, you can tension it up a little better. I did have to double up bearings on the bottom here, and I had to put something to keep them in place. But uh, the double bearing doesn't seem to be a problem. That said, because I am t uh, tensioning these belts a lot more than what probably was in the original um, design, um, they used or the gentleman who des designed this originally, the original that the instructable was made from, used just flat stock on all the corners to uh, stretch the belts and I didn't think that was a very good idea because I'm you're bound to just kind of bend it so this is angle iron you can see it there uh, I think it's a little bit stronger you do have to kind of be careful where you place your holes otherwise you can't get a nut to screw on but uh, it seems to be okay uh, next thing you're probably wondering why I have all of these little brown slats well you can see little holes hole hole Hole, hole, hole. Uh, there's like 25 holes on here which are threaded with um, quarter inch inserts, which is great. 
uh, but you don't want to be screwing your material straight down to the board or to the table because if you did and you went through your material all the way, then you'd be cutting into your, um, your surface of your um, table, which is bad. So you need sacrificial boards. That's what those are. Um, real quick, since I'm looking at it, uh, I used six conductor 20 gauge wire. Um, that seemed to be about right. You only need four conductors for these motors, but I found that the extra conductors were great um, because, well, for two reasons. One, um, with two extra conductors, you could run current to something else, which is great, and I'll show you that because I did do uh, put a light strip underneath here. Or since it also has a, um, a ground unshielded wire that runs through it all, you can then have two limits, which is going through and sharing the common ground, which is great. You can see that up here. Um, well, that's for another switch. But there's the common ground that I share. And here's one limit switch again. This is for my Z vertical. Um, again, more limit switches. Those are ran in uh, parallel to one conductor yeah, up here. Great. Those are micro, switch, micro switches. They're great. Um, and again, while I'm up here, uh, my X and Y axis, both of them are NEMA 34 motors. Um, let's see, 800, six to 800 ounces of torque. Way overkill, but I wanted to go overkill as opposed to uh, too weak, especially because of all I'm moving. I also have one motor on each side for my my y-axis. Now there's a lot of controversy over that and I wanted to do this because I didn't want to deal with linkage. Um, and what I did is in Mach 3 I slaved both of those together. That was actually the the a-axis on a five-axis breakout board for Mach 3. So I slaved A to Y Make sure they both go in the same direction, and until a stepper driver dies, they should be in good shape. Uh, could go with a smaller NEMA 30, you know, 23 motor because I get some mechanical advantage with a ball screw in this little unit here. That was a good find on eBay. Couldn't tell you where to get another one. Sorry. Um, <laughs> that's about it for up here. Um, down in here, I'm running one. 16 and a half amp 24 volt power supply seems to be enough got an e-stop always want e-stops those are good got that like i said that um five axis breakout board here and if you guys want to know a little bit more about how i wired that up just ask and i'll try to post something on it i have a lighted switch so i know when it's on and do be safe i put a 20 amp breaker here at most this thing can draw about 18 amps so i think that should be in that should be all right one thing about the breakout board, I know, sorry, bad light. Actually, you can't even see it at all, it's sad. Uh, up here, hiding behind these wires. Nope, not gonna see it. Uh, there's a little power supply. It takes 12 volts to uh, five volts. You know, something you'd pull out of a, a cell phone charger for your car. This breakout board does not have voltage. It needs uh, five volts coming into it through the USB port that's on it. Um, so you have to give it 5 volts somehow, and I just use one of those little uh, adapters. I had plenty of them, which is great. But what that does mean is I have 24 volts coming into my power supply. I have 110 coming in from my main. And then over here, right here, there's a little switch. And I actually have a little port on the front. That is for a 12 volt power supply to power the uh, Mach 3 breakout board. And then my little light strip that runs on 12 volts. Um, there's my four stepper drivers. Label them, don't get them confused. X, Y, Y2, otherwise known as A. Z is down here, it's a little smaller one, but it's only powering a NEMA 23. Uh, all of my motors are only running at two amps, which is nice. The bigger stepper drivers are actually rated to five. The little one down there is rated to three. But in any case, um, the stepper motors don't need as much as the driver can provide, so you just kind of adjust your, uh, your well, dip switches in this case, I think it's a little other switches down here. Adjust those so that it's just under the maximum rating for the 
the the uh, motor. So I think all these uh, these two are at 1.8 amps for a two amp motor, and these two, um, since they're running in parallel, yeah, parallel mode, and they had eight wires. Anyway, it's, they're running at like 2.5, and it's really could draw 2.8. So whatever. Um, you see this cable? Yeah, I know. Don't worry. It's not plugged in. Not to mention, it goes to outlets, not uh, plug-ins. Um, that will go to a relay that will be powered by the breakout board so that when it gets ready to cut, it'll turn on the router and dust collection. You see that I need dust collection. Uh, I don't have that yet. Still coming over on a slow boat from China. Uh, I am running parallel port. I think that's the only way you can do this. Maybe you can run USB. Don't know. Don't care. Because I have an old laptop that's running this via parallel port. Um, I think that's about it. Oh, yeah. Um, if you can get one of these, these are great. The router speed controls. It turns your typical, just regular 30,000 RPM router, like this one, gives you some uh, variable control, which is great for going through different materials. So if you can get one of those, great. Couldn't tell you where to get one. I've had that for ages. Um, but it does work nicely for going through different hardnesses of wood and when you're cutting plastic and whatnot. All right, I think that's about it. I'm kind of running out of time for what YouTube allows me to post. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask. This thing does work, which is great. Um, now I just need to calibrate it a little further, figure out how fast I can go through materials, and what kind of depth I can cut in each pass. But uh, it's a blast. You know, total sense of accomplishment when you can build something like this and it works, and no catastrophic failures of any variety. Um, grand total for the bill of this was about $750, plus or minus about 10 or 15 because I'm buying a few other little trinkets to make it better. Like, for example, that um, LED strip. Ta-da! LED strip. I guess I can. LED strip. Very nice. Uh, light up what you're working on a little bit. So, you guys have a good one. Bye-bye.